Unboxing, Tests and Review of the Glary GTL Maple Necked Electric Guitar. Before we start the review, I'd like to point out that this guitar was actually provided by Glary for review. However, even though they provided the guitar, I am going to be completely honest about what I think about it. So, if it's rubbish, I'll say so. Now, I don't know anything about this guitar, so let's take a look on the Glary website just to find out what they say about it. Straight away, looking at the pictures on the website, you can see it's based on a Telecaster style guitar. And it's available in multiple colours, however they all have the maple neck, which I don't mind because it's my preferred neck style. The prices are ridiculously cheap, and at the moment they've got a Black Friday special on, so you can get the yellow one even cheaper. And this guitar reminds me very much of the butterscotch telly that Bruce Springsteen immortalised, so I can see these flying out the door quite quickly. To be absolutely honest, based on the price, I'm not expecting very much from this guitar. Looking at the pictures further down the web page, you can see they're available in five colours. However, at the point I did this screen capture, there was only four available on the website. So I assume this varies depending on availability. At the time I did this screen capture, the guitar was available in yellow, blue, sunset and green. And all the colours are transparent, so you can see the wood grain through them. Which, as a reviewer, I prefer, because then you can see what the guitar's made of, and they can't get away with hiding stuff under a solid colour. Right, let's take a look at the spec. And you can see, looking down the spec, there's no surprises. It's all pretty much what you'd expect from a guitar of its type. The body is made of bass wood, which is quite a common choice amongst guitar makers, and as we already know, the neck is maple. All the measurements are exactly what you'd expect for a guitar of this type, including the width of the nut and the scale length. And this means, if you're starting from scratch, when you eventually want to move on to a more expensive guitar, you'll get used to the new guitar quite quickly, because it won't be too dissimilar. Below the spec, it tells you what you get in the package, which is the guitar, a guitar bag, a shoulder strap, a power wire, by which I assume they mean an instrument lead, two tools, and a plectrum. Right, let's get on with the unboxing. And the guitar arrived in quite a small box, which suggests it's not double boxed, but the box seems all intact. I'm speeding up all the unboxing process to make it a little less boring. Inside the box, the guitar is completely encased in polystyrene, which has its obvious advantages in that the guitar has arrived safely through the postage system. However, it's got its obvious disadvantages. So there it is, one guitar and three bags of goodies. Right, let's get the guitar out of this last bit of packaging. The first thing I noticed when I picked the guitar up is that it's quite light, which could be an advantage if you're planning on carrying the guitar around a lot with you or if you're planning on giving it to a youngster to learn to play on. The finish on the body is high gloss, and it's a really good high gloss. The varnish is more or less perfect, and the look of the wood and the grain underneath the varnish is really nice as well. However, I can only comment on the guitar I've got here, because wood's obviously a natural material, this is going to be different on every single guitar. 
The guitar in front of me looks way better than the guitars on the website because for some reason on the website it looks like the wood finish on the body is either satin or matte but obviously it's not. And when you're looking at the website you can't get over the psychological barrier that this is a cheap guitar. But looking at it in front of me now I would never guess it was under £100. The metal parts of the guitar look really good as well. The chrome looks really deep and shiny and I can't see any flaws or anything wrong with that. As we mentioned earlier, both the neck and the fingerboard are made of maple and they're finished in a matte finish, which is really popular these days. And the frets are jumbo sized, but they do look like they need a bit of a polish. I'll better be able to comment on this later when I actually try playing the guitar. The back of the guitar is a solid black high gloss finish, which again looks really good. With the photos and videos you've just been watching, I've obviously not taken the protective film of things like the scratch plate and the machine heads, but we'll go through all the details now and I'll take those coverings off as I go. Let's start with the machine heads as I tune the guitar up. I'm taking the protective covers off so you can see what's underneath. However, if you prefer to leave them in place, you can. I've had students who've left their protective films on their guitar for years after they've been coming for lessons. But one thing I'd like to warn you about is if you leave them on too long, they can then tarnish the surface and they get harder and harder to get off. The machine heads then are quite nice ones. They're sealed and I can't find any play on any of the machine heads. And the tension on all the machine heads seems quite uniform as well. You sometimes find one or two machine heads are easier to turn than the others, but these are quite uniform, which actually it's unusual for a cheaper guitar. I did a review of some Goika machine heads recently that were really loose and it made it really difficult to fine tune the guitar. I'll put the link to that video down below in the description in case you want to watch it. Right, I'll tune the guitar up. If you're new to the world of guitars or you're thinking of getting a new guitar, don't be worried if it goes out of tune quickly over the first few days. All new guitars have a little settling in period where the actual guitar settles in to the stress of the strings and the actual strings stretch a little. So for the first couple of times you play it, you might have to tune it two or three times. However, slowly over time, it'll settle in. This guitar is tuning up quite well. So I'll probably just go through it once or maybe twice just to check it's staying in tune. But I won't show that on video cause it'll get very boring. Tuning this guitar, I can tell you that the machine heads are pretty good. They're very smooth and there's either no play at all or it's so slight it's not discernible. So it's easy to get the guitar in tune. It's obviously better to tune the guitar in a playing position, but I'm tuning it like this so that the guitar and the tuner stay stable whilst I film it. Now to one of my least favourite jobs on a new guitar, and that's taking the protective film off the scratch plate. And quite often this gets stuck around the pickups or under the screws or under the knobs on Fender Strat style guitars. So I'll take a screw out first to get the thing started and then I'll see if I need to take any more screws out. Because sometimes if you don't remove the screws you end up with bits of plastic film under the screws permanently. And I'm happy to say that with this guitar the holes in the film are big enough that you don't need to take the screws out at all. So hopefully it'll all come out fairly easily. 
And now the scratch plate's as shiny as the rest of the guitar. For anyone who's not familiar with electric guitars, or with the Telecaster style guitar, let's just take a look at the controls and features. This guitar's got two single coil pickups. One's by the bridge and called the bridge pickup, and one's by the neck and called the neck pickup. We've got a tone control, a volume control, and the pickup selector. And the pickup selector has three positions. With the switch in the left position as you're looking at it, only the pickup by the bridge will be selected, and the neck pickup will be silent. In the middle, both pickups will be activated. And on the right hand side, as you're looking at it, only the neck pickup will be activated and the bridge pickup will be silent. The sound coming out of each pickup has its own characteristics, partially because of the type of pickup and partially because of where it is. So using the pickup selector switch, you can get the sound as close to the way you want it as you can. And of course you can use the volume and tone control as well to get even more variations in sound. Right, now you've got the theory, let's see if the controls actually work. Tests of the Glarry GTL electric guitar. Right, let's just do a very simple test and check that the tone, volume and pickup selector switch are working. First, the pickup selector. Now the volume. Now the tone. Both the volume and the tone controls work really well and they turn really smoothly and there's no crackles or nastiness in them at all. And the pickup selector switch is positive and smooth so I've got no problems with the way the guitar works. Right, let's try the guitar just playing a couple of bars of some different types of sounds and see how it copes. First of all then, here's a clean sound with some finger picking and some strumming. I'll let that ring off just so you could hear how much sustain the guitar has. Right, let's see how it copes with some dirty power chord type sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
you might have noticed some hum there in the background at the end. And that's quite normal for a single coil pickup. Even some of the high end ones have the same problem. And if you want to eliminate any background noise, you simply put the pickup selector switch in the centre position. And then the two pickups behave like a humbucker pickup. Here's that being demonstrated, and I'm exaggerating the effect by turning up the gain way too loud and holding the guitar by a transformer. Before playing on this guitar, I was a little concerned about the ashtray style bridge plate because I'm not used to playing with them. However, it doesn't make any difference to the play and I quite like it. And if you're an absolute beginner, you might find it useful to gauge how much pressure you're putting on the strings when you're learning to palm mute. So the ashtray bridge plate is quite a nice feature. Right, for the next test, I'm just going to play the major scale up and down across all the strings. And I'm doing this so you can listen to whether all the strings are reasonably the same tone and the same volume. You can get guitars with bright or muted strings, either due to poor pickups or the strings. But if it was the strings, you could easily replace them. Here that is then on both pickups. My conclusions on this guitar. First, the feel and playability of the guitar, starting with the body. The general feel of the body is really good. The corners are all rounded off. And as I said earlier, the finish of the body is really good. It is a little bit lighter than an original Telecaster, but this makes it even more comfortable, if anything. And the balance of the guitar doesn't throw up any surprises. It behaves really well. The neck is quite fat, so when I picked it up yesterday, I really noticed this. However, as I played it through yesterday and today, when I pick it up now, I really don't notice that. So it's not badly fat. It's just a little fatter than a genuine Telecaster, for example. So I wouldn't describe the neck as bad at all. It's very good. And a child could play this guitar, providing they're big enough to hold a full-size guitar, that is. And the biggest surprise to me was the fact that the frets have no sharp edges, none of them, right the way up the neck. And this is actually a first for me on a cheap guitar. Usually the first thing you notice on all cheap guitars is the fact that the frets have sharp edges. So that is really good. But the frets do need a polish. When I picked up the guitar yesterday and did some string bending, you could feel the abrasion between the strings and the frets. And when you first get the guitar, it could really do with a setup. This one had slightly high strings and a very slight bow in the neck. But both of these things could be sorted very easily. I'll be making a video very soon on how to set up a guitar using this guitar. So if you hit the subscribe and bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload that video. Or if I've already done it, I'll put the link down below in the description. So check below just in case. The guitar accessories. Usually when I do a review, I put the accessories at the beginning of the video. But for this guitar, I've put the accessories at the end, and there's a reason for that. 
let's take a look at the accessories. And they came in three bags. In one bag was the guitar case. In another bag was the guitar strap. And in the third bag was a lead and the two tools. The two tools, which are Allen keys, are good quality. The larger one even has an extended tip so you can reach inside to adjust the truss rod. And the smaller one is essential for adjusting the saddle height on your guitar. So both of these tools will be used quite a lot during the guitar's lifetime. The lead is nothing special. It's quite a light lead with moulded plastic plugs on the end. However, it is useful to have it so you don't have to go looking for a lead straight away. The guitar bag will offer the guitar some protection. It looks waterproof and it's got a carrying handle and shoulder straps. However, it's got no padding. So if you were to bang the guitar against a sharp surface whilst it was in the bag, the guitar would still be damaged. The guitar is genuinely a nice instrument. So if it was mine and I was taking it out, I would definitely put it in a better case. But when storing the guitar in the house to prevent minor scratches, dust and sun damage, this case will be fine. And finally, that leads to the strap. The canvas on the strap is strong enough to carry anything and your guitar would be safe on there. However, the ends of the strap are really dubious to me. And I don't want to sound melodramatic, but I wouldn't put any of my guitars on that strap. If you look at the material at the end of the strap that mounts to the guitar, this takes all the weight of the guitar and where the hole is, they distort on even the best straps. So given a little time, your guitar will fall off the strap and more than likely your guitar will end up damaged. So I'd throw this away and replace it with a good quality one because it's a worthwhile instrument to protect. Now I can understand why Glary have done this and they've marketed it with the case and the strap and stuff because it makes the guitar more sellable. However, in my mind, the guitar is really good. So I would really want to take care of it. And from this point of view, I'm not that impressed with the accessories, except for the tools. To me, this doesn't make the guitar package less attractive. Because to me, the guitar is worth over £100. So it's a really nice instrument for the money. And if you take care of it, the guitar could last for years or even the rest of your life. So if you think about that for so little money, it's pretty damn good. All this being said about the bargain price of the guitar, it's even cheaper at the time I'm making this video because they've got a Black Friday deal on. And I'll put the link to that down below in the description. And I'll try to keep that link updated as they introduce new offers. I'll end this video with me improvising on the guitar just to give you more of an idea how it sounds. So I'll close up now. Thank you very much for coming and watching this video. It's much appreciated. And if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more review videos and lots more tutorial videos, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you want to learn guitar, you could go to www.ebooksforguitar.com and because I believe it's better to learn guitar in short courses rather than single lessons, you can find the courses all in order there so they're easier to watch. And of course you can find the short courses as playlists on my channel page. Thanks again for watching and I hope you come back again soon.